Hey friends, my name is Jen and I'm part of the team here at South Points. Well, guess what? Here we are. We have made it to spring break. For some of us, this means heartbreak over canceled family plans. Or maybe you're hiding in your basement, hoping that your family will keep it to a dull roar for five minutes while you sneak in and record a video. Or maybe you're experiencing frustration over another week of trying to work with all of your children at home. Disrupted schedules, unclean homes. For others, it means another week to lean into your families and enjoy this time with them. It also means that another week of social distancing and stay at home orders have passed. You might be feeling stuck right now. I know that I sure am. I am not sure if I am coming or going. Surprise! Guess what? I'm not doing either because I'm not leaving my home. That also means that no one else in my family is leaving our home, which means mountains of dishes all of the time. How do these kids even produce these many dishes? If I hear one more time, we are out of cups, I might just lose my mind. I seem to be stuck in this loop of trying to work, parent, teach, maintain order in my home, get my kids to actually do their chores, prepare all the food, manage all the drama that comes with having six people in our home, and it feels extra overwhelming all the time. Most days, I can just suck it up and power through, but a week ago, it all came crumbling down. I found myself absolutely unable to do one more thing. I spent all day in tears. A couple of my friends were also having a rough day and they had decided to do a Zoom call so that we could all see each other and encourage one another. I had agreed to this initially, but then decided that the last thing I wanted to do was put my face out there for others to see. I'm a splotchy crier and so once I've cried, everybody can tell. One of my friends um, decided to call my bluff and was trying to talk me into joining the call. And I was, you know, holding it together when my husband walked in and said that our dog had gotten out. Cue the tears again. My husband just looked at me and said, are you crying again? And all I could manage was, yes, I've cried all day long. You see friends, I love Jesus, but I am not the keep it together or stuff it inside kind of person. I find great comfort in talking to Jesus and my friends about how imperfect I am and how hard life seems to be sometimes. My first encouragement to you is if you do not have a friend who will sit with you in the pit of despair and then tell you to get up, dust yourself off and take the next step, you need to get one. Secondly, by processing my grief and frustration with someone, I was able to see past my own frustration and was able to open my eyes further to how big Christ's love is for us. I was able to see that I'm not the only one struggling with these issues. I was able to take my eyes off of myself and look around. By simply looking up from my own frustrations and grief, I was able to not only see my friends where they are, but also Christ and his love for us. I love my friends dearly, but I'm pretty sure it pales in comparison to Christ's love for all of us. We tend to see ourselves from the mud that we're currently sitting in, from the real life struggles that we are facing every day. But God sees us through the blood of Christ that washes us clean. He wants to give us strength for our broken and beautiful lives. Romans 8.38 tells us, For I am convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love, neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the power of hell can separate us from God's love. Let me repeat that for you. Nothing can stop Christ's constant presence with us. And while it's not expressly written in this passage, I'm pretty sure that we could add in that nothing can separate us from God's love. Not kids that won't do their chores until mom or dad become an absolute crazy person. Not a home that seems to be in constant chaos. Not a dog who has run away not once, but twice in one day. And not even COVID-19. God tells us how great his love is so that we will feel totally secure in him. If we believe these assurances, we will not be afraid. If we can channel this anxiety, stress, and overwhelmingness to him, he will see us through this. Psalm 30 verse 5 tells us that weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. We cannot get to the morning without going through the night. That means we cannot get to the joy without going through the weeping or the pain or the crying all day long. Whatever your current pain or situation is, Maybe you're working from home. 
Maybe you're not working at all because of the current situation and you're wondering how you're going to survive. Maybe you're working in a profession that requires you to work on the front lines of this virus and possibly bring this home to your family. Maybe your kids are home and they're little and they're underfoot. Or maybe you're parenting teens and they need extra emotional support during this time and you just don't have any more to give. Maybe you do not have kids or family at home and are feeling extra lonely during this season. Wherever you are, God will meet you there. He is with you. Find a trusted friend that you can talk to about what you're feeling. Friends, please hear me. Today is hard. Tomorrow might be even harder. But if we continue to pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off, cut ourselves a little or a whole lot of slack, joy will come. Savor the small wins when you have them. Lean into God. He is here with us and he will see us through this.